Welcome back to another episode of Studio Time, and we're still not done with Mortal Engines. We still have a couple more things to cover. And the thing that we're going to cover in this episode are two themes. One is for Tom, and one is for Catherine. Um, they both come from London, uh, so the theme is related to the London thing. But this is the, the moment where the theme gets really noble. Eventually, it turns out into this very heroic musical section uh, at the end of the um, uh, film, like around 70-80%. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about the theme that I wrote for this. So you heard a little bit of this in the very first uh, episode of um, uh, the London Suite, when I said, we're going to talk about this more in a future episode. And this is the moment. So we're going to talk about this. So. Um, a very interesting conversation that I had with um, Brita, Freyan and Christian was um, about uh, the planets by, uh, by Holst. Um, so not only, this has been uh, talked about many, many times, like how inspiration from certain film scores had come from, uh, from the planets. And rightfully so, it's, it's a fantastic uh, piece of music. Um, but there's one aspect of the planets that makes it extra special in relationship to England. And that is um, the composition called uh, Pluto, if I'm not mistaken. And there's a section in the, in the, the Pluto piece of music that um, the English have really adapted uh, to themselves, almost as important as the national anthem almost. Um, there are many versions of that theme um, with words, uh, with choirs singing it, um, brass bands play it, it's been performed many times over. And um, I just talked to the cameraman who happens to be English and he even remembered, right, so um, that that stuff was being played in the, what was it, like the dining mess or something like that? Yeah. Or the, the, in school, in school, yeah, in, assembly. Yeah, okay, the school, the school assembly. Uh, so um, the, the planets would be played uh, there. So he even um, uh, remembers some of that. Um, so um, what I wanted to say is that I wanted to write something that was not that, but was reminiscent of um, that feeling. It's a very slow moving melody, uh, very noble, and uh, it has really nice uh, warm, chord progression with it. Um, so I have a horn patch open here. Um, so I'm just going to play this um, this uh, theme that I come up with uh, that I came up with. I'm going to have a little look at uh, the, the mini screen every now and then just um, make sure that I, I remember it well. So here I'm going to play it. And then it can start over again. Now, what's very interesting about this melody, and this was, um, this is how it's so great to um, work with uh, a creative team that um, is very critical on the the music uh, that you um, that you make, and rightfully so. Uh, and um, I wanted to point that out, that element. But I want to do uh, say a little bit about that. Is that um, when I worked with uh, this creative team and their filmmakers on such an incredible high level that um, I was thinking with myself, so what is actually um, one of my favorite uh, James Newton Howard scores? Um, and I immediately thought of King Kong, which made such a profound impact on me. He's done amazing other film scores too, don't get me wrong. Um, he's a absolute like fantastic composer and I'm you know looking at him um, you know as a, as a, as a hero um, but nevertheless King Kong is one of the uh, really inspiring film scores for me that I know and then if we talk about Howard Shore what is one of the best film scores that I liked from him 
again, you know, we're talking about a film score, uh, a film composer that has such a history of uh, composing themes. And again, another film composer I regard like in, uh, you know, <laughs> super high regards, another hero. Um, but it's the, um, the second Lord of the Rings uh, for me. Now, what have these two movies in common and these two composers? You might have guessed it. Peter Jackson is the connection here. He directed uh, King Kong. He directed uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but he's a producer on this movie and his voice was very vocal during the music review uh, uh, meetings. On the side, I had a lot of contact with uh, Fran, who also is very influential on the music and obviously an awful lot with Christian, who is the director on this. So the three of them were very important in a voice that they uh, projected to me what they wanted the score to be. Nevertheless, when I when I figured this out, it's like, wait a minute, why do I like these scores? It's like the, the glue between the two scores is this creative team. So I thought with myself, if these people have something to say about the music, you better pay attention because maybe I deliver a score that people might say, you know, that score that Junkie did, that Tom did, was good. The rest is shit. But that one was really good. And and that would then be the reason because I worked with this wonderful creative team in, in Wellington, New Zealand. Who knows? <laughs> Story on the side. Okay, let's get back to it. What they wanted to change was a couple of things. Like, so I had actually the melody not resolve. I actually kept it, kept it going. So once we got to the point here, um, that's how I had it. But they really wanted that strong resolution back on C. So instead of what I just did, And actually, eventually, this worked really well in the movie, potentially better than one that what, what I had. Uh, actually, not potentially, <laughs> it was better. Um, so again, this is like a small example, like how you constantly work together with your with the creative team. Also, this theme was like um, uh, I'm still trying to find the the the, the words for it. Uh, since we're recording all these episodes in one go, I can't look at the comments that you left on the on the YouTube uh, channel below. But I'm looking for that expression, uh, shot in the rose, hit in the park, whatever that expression is. It was immediately, um, it was sold immediately when they heard it. Okay, so that was the melody. Now let's take us out of this. And then now let's play that melody again. Um, and when it gets actually a little bigger and now the strings uh, start uh, taking on uh, the melody and everything gets bigger. So let's just play that thing when it, when it gets bigger. We lo we're looking at the string programming at this point. So let me take one laid out so we could see uh, everything at the same time. That would be really great. Okay. So you see the basses here are playing in the same octave as uh, the cello. Um, but the bass actually bases sound an octave lower. This is the wonderful string library um, by Cinematic Strings, my library of choice uh, to go to it for the for the long programmed uh, string. So the bass actually sounds an octave lower than it's being programmed. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that's Tom's theme. That starts off noble, very small, and then gets really, really big. 
the way that we just played it happens at two spots in the in the film where something heroic is uh, is is happening and um it gets nice and big there with the strings with the choir complete woodwinds uh, ensemble and uh, and uh, brass not a lot of production tricks going on here so the, i don't need to go to the um, tracks up there um so at the end of this episode we will play this thing how it was recorded with um with uh, the live orchestra. I just want to move on to the next section of this um, uh, suite here, where we now introduce uh, a different character. And this character uh, is called uh, Catherine. And uh, Catherine needed a melody that was um, a little bit more uh, emotional in, uh, in nature. And uh, I totally forgot how to play this thing out of the top of my head. It's been so long ago since I wrote this thing. Um, this is like somewhere, um, uh, probably October, November, um, a year, <laughs> a year ago. So, um, so here we go. We're 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 having the celli uh, on her, on their own here, and we see two key switches there. So I'm just gonna roll the cursor over it. So I'm I'm 100% sure that I have the. Uh, the right articulation there. Again, what I mentioned in previous episodes, make sure you watch a future episode of my new template because I'm using expression maps right now in um, uh, uh, in Cubase, which is absolutely fantastic. And I also have a separate episode, how to make them. So we'll, we'll just get into it. Nevertheless, let's go to this melody. So let's play this melody on its own. And then the melody actually gets taken over by the by the strings, who then repeats what you just hear in this uh, first part here. So I could also bring in the rest of the strings. Um, and actually, I might have programmed it on the bassoon too. Uh, so let's just quickly check. Uh, let's see, where are we? We are here. Okay, let's play this thing. <laughs> It was a little too late. Let's back up. That's where the streak starts. So let's play it from here. Okay, um, so you see here what the what the melody does, how it gets taken over by the by the violins, and then at a certain point, uh, I do a key change and I go to a different key uh, where I start playing the A natural, and then the melody change, and then it and then it continues. So this is just a string. So there's way more happening at the same time. Uh, we'll get to that uh, later, um, uh, and then after that. Um, a bit comes back from the first theme. You have to understand that, that there's um, this Catherine and uh, Tom have like this uh, working relationship together, if you will. It's not a it's not a love relationship, but it's like the two of them uh, grow together in this whole story to then eventually come to this um, uh, great um, heroic action uh, action bit. So, if we play from here, there's a bit coming back from his theme. <laughs> in the horn melody, what we just uh, discussed. We also hear a little bit of the, the London bells that we discussed in the first uh, episode. Again, we're looking at a MIDI session here. This is not the final recording. Uh, so now we hear 
tom steam back but now in the really lower uh, lower octaves Let me stop here for a second. So now the melody comes back um, in the horns and in the strings, but the harmony is now completely uh, uh, changed. So here we see on top the melody that I just played in the cello for Catherine. Uh, so let's just back up and now we see what uh, the bass bones are doing uh, against it. Um, let's just remove this lane uh, so we can see all the notes together. Uh, okay, so here we go again. Okay, so there's what I start tra transposing and just doing things uh, different. It, to a certain extent, similar to what you've heard earlier when I went from the E flat to the E natural, something is happening here when I go from the G to the G, uh, G sharp, uh, G natural to the G sharp in the, in the, in the horn. So you see some, a somewhat uh, similar thing here. Okay, so um, that's the idea for these both themes uh, from a MIDI perspective. Like I said, there's not a, not a lot of production going on. It's, it's, um, it's just strings, woodwinds, brass. Uh, let's see what's up there. Um, uh, there's a little bit of sound design, but not, not really like super important. Uh, a little bit of percussion, a little bit of gongs, a little bit of um, timpanis. Um, uh, we have uh, a distorted bass guitar. Um, uh, let me play those. Um, they really beef up the, the, the bass trombones. So there you hear that theme again. But it switches octaves and, and I changed the notes a little bit. Took some liberty to change it a little bit over there. But it's still that theme in distortion basses. But it sounds really nice with... Uh, the bass trombones and with um, the basses from the orchestra. Okay, that's it on a MIDI level. Now I would like to open up um, the the mix sessions. We'll start with the Tom theme. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we recorded it, what we changed, and then uh, we're just going to play that. And after that, we'll go to the Catherine's theme. Uh, so let me load up the mix session right now. And we're back. And now we're in the mix session of... Um, Tom's theme that we just talked about. Oh, I want to say something about this thing. I completely stand corrected. I was just corrected by one of my assistants and the cameraman, of course, who told me this morning, but I didn't listen well. I was not talking about Pluto. I was talking about Jupiter. So it's the song Jupiter from the planets that the English have adopted almost as like a, a second national anthem. So it wasn't Pluto. It was Jupiter. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Um, and back into the mix session. So if we just scroll through it, you see like how little or nothing is really there. I mean, there's a, a sub bass there, uh, some crashes and gongs and some timpani and a low hit. And then we already go straight to the strings and the brass and the choir. So <clears throat> there's a lot, not a lot of production stuff here. Um, so we just talked about what's all in there musically. So let me just play the final recording of this.
Okay, so that's Tom's team. Makes quite a difference, right? When it's played with um, real choir, brass, woodwinds, and strings. Um, <clears throat> and that says you again, there's only so far you can come with uh, samples and then when you have a you know, real ox uh, playing, it's, um, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, I open up again uh, the plugins for this movie that I primarily have been using in the mix session. Like I said many times before, it's not really a mix session to really alter the sound of the score at all. It's just very minor tweaks because everything is already done on a queue level and when I built my own libraries and blah, 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 blah. So uh, we already discussed that. So again, I just want to bring up these plugins here. It's the BX console E and then the Waves uh, in-face uh, stereo that I use a lot to do some tweakings to make it a little wider and to um, do like a little bit of EQ, a little bit of processing. Uh, I'm also looking here at the Oakville Auxiliary Sense. So I'm just using here um, uh, two lexicons uh, to create a front reverb and a back reverb uh, to um, uh, have some extra reverb on the brass and the strings and the choir. Nothing too major. Okay, now I want to switch to Catherine Sling. So we will be right back. Okay, we're back with uh, Catherine's theme. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that this thing is not going to the output. Okay, perfect. That thing actually can get muted. That's my uh, two mix. We don't need it at this point. I'm um, just going to open up this thing here. And um, yep, the same type of recordings as the as uh, Tom's theme that we uh, that we just played. So what I wanted to say, though, is that these uh, two themes were actually part of the London Suite um, the, you know, the 30, 40 minute, super, super long thing that I didn't play you in one go because it's just too much. Um, so we're focusing this episode on Tom and Catherine's theme. Um, so now I want to play you Catherine's theme and then the continuation of that and then how it uh, then changes into like a different piece of music where now uh, Tom's theme and Catherine's theme are playing off each other uh, and also creates this really dangerous um, uh, action uh, section in here. Also, this piece of music, uh, almost in its entirely, is happening in the, um, in the film at a certain point. And I found it a little bit more interesting to uh, play the theme in full than actually going to the cue that I did for the film, even though they're pretty much the same length and the same musical materials in it. We'll look at cues uh, later on, but um, let's just now play this recording of this thing.
And there you have it, an episode on Tom's team and Catherine's team. I hope you liked this episode and I'd like to see you soon on another one. Stay tuned, see you soon.